A very good morning, everyone. Today we'll be studying the third unit of our course, which is price, income, and substitution effect. These three are necessarily included in the price effect, as you will be seeing when I'll be explaining them. Price effect is a summation of simply income effect and substitution effect. So directly come here to what is price effect. Price effect is let's say you are buying a commodity due to its price in a certain quantity. When the price of that thing changes, you will definitely change the quantity that you are buying of it. There are two particular reasons because of which you are going to change that quantity. You see, price effect can be defined as change in quantity demanded of something, let's say good X, due to its change in price, and other things remaining constant that is called as interest variables. Okay. When the price of something you buy reduces or increases. You are definitely going to change its quantity that you were buying earlier. You are changing it because of two reasons. First of all, when a certain things gets cheaper or dearer, that means expensive, your real income changes. Real income means that is the capacity of money to buy things for you. That is, let's say your nominal income is one lakh per month. And the thing you were buying, you you went to buy a fridge that was earlier twenty thousand rupees. Okay, and you were able, to, you can if you want to buy five units. That is your real income. This five is your real income. And if the price increases and your nominal income is still one lakh, if the price increases to twenty five thousand, so your real income reduces. The thing buying power of your income is called as real income. So we are going to change the quantity demanded of a good due to changing real income because the price of something has changed. And there is another reason also that fridge whose price has increased now it has become expensive in comparison to other fridges. Okay, so that good either becomes cheaper or expensive in comparison to other goods also when the prices of other goods are constant. So when the price of certain thing changes. Your quantity demanded for that thing changes due to two reasons. First, due to change in real income, which is called as income effect. Second, due to change in relative prices, price of the thing you are buying and its substitutes. This is called as substitution effect. Okay, so you can understand when certain things get ex gets expensive or it gets cheaper, you buy more of it. There are two reasons behind it. First one is income effect. Second one is substitution effect. Okay, now let's move on. Let's discuss these things one by one now. Price effect. What is price effect? That you just uh, studied change in quantity demanded of a good due to change in its price when the prices of other things remain constant. That is everything else remains constant. Okay, that is stress variables. This is Latin for everything else remaining constant. And let's first understand this concept. Elast. Uh, in the price elasticity of demand price elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded of a good you are buying and percentage change in its price it's simple formula okay now the good we are talking about here is x and let's see this denominator percentage change in price we are keeping it as constant at 5% okay now with equal reduction in the price that is we are reducing the price of x by 5% again and again we are now seeing how the quantity demanded of x will change okay and it will behave differently it will change differently let's say we start reducing the price of x by 5% again by 5% again by 5% again by 5% the quantity demanded of x will change first let's say you are going to buy more and more of it uh, then you are going to buy constant amounts of it let's say it behaves differently just understand this thing and the manner in which this numerator changes due to 5% changes in prices gives different shapes to the PCC that is price consumption curve price consumption curve what is its definition I'll tell you later on let's see delta P uh, ch percentage change in prices 5% okay when you, you must remember this is a budget line and price of when something gets cheaper this budget line moves like this okay this this leg let's say good x is here and y is uh, y is 
on the y axis and if this thing gets cheaper this leg will move towards the right okay which is you can see in all these graph the leg on the this side is moving towards the right all right the leg on the x axis now when there are fixed percentage change in price 5% it is the price is reducing by 5% that's why this leg is moving towards the right as you can see the percentage change in quantity earlier this much change was there first 5% when the price reduced by 5% this much change then it again reduced by 5% the change increased then it again reduced by 5% the change increased more so this percentage change in quantity is increasing here okay and in this graph you can see it clearly it is constant all right and in this graph you can see it is reducing and in the next graph you can see the quantity demanded when the price was on this budget line let's say when the price was something this was the quantity demanded and when the price reduced its quantity demanded first stayed the same when the price reduced further its quantity demanded actually decreased the quantity demanded of x reduced when it got cheaper okay there are some goods which behave in this way also so this is decreasing and it is negative also okay so what is the value of price elasticity of demand price elasticity of demand you can see the numerator is increasing and the denominator is constant so it is it is definitely what can you say it is increasing okay and when the price elasticity of uh, when the quantity is constant and both the things are constant denominator and numerator it will remain constant elasticity of production will reduce uh, price elasticity will reduce and price elasticity will be negative here all right so what is price consumption curve now when the price of good x reduces the right and uh, the leg on the x axis moves towards the right okay and these equilibrium points the locus of equilibrium points when the price of a uh, price of a good changes is called as price consumption curve locus of equilibrium points when price of a good changes is called as price consumption curve okay now you just need to remember here all these details plus the basic thing is whenever the price changes the quantity demanded changes differently for different types of goods okay you, you can see these things are necessarily different types of goods now coming to the next slide uh, so see first was our price effect equal to income effect plus substitution effect this was the first equation on the first slide we have understood this thing and we have understood what is price consumption curve now we will be coming to income effect okay what is income effect income effect is uh, simply i told you ki jab bhi kisi cheez ka price kam hota hai aapki real income but, uh, price change hota hai to aapki real income bhi badalti hai so whenever the price of something changes your real income also changes and the change that brings in the quantity demanded of a good is called as income effect price change real income will change and this leads to change in quantity demanded of x let's say we are talking about x so this is called as income effect okay this portion the change in quantity demanded due to change in real income is called as income effect so as you might remember when the income or budget of a person increases from the ordinal utility analysis the budget line will shift from b1 l1 to b2 l2 b3 l3 b4 l4 it will shift towards the right okay when the budget or income increases budget and income is necessarily the same uh, when you have income that is your budget with which you are going to buy certain things okay when it increases the budget line shifts towards the right okay and what is income consumption curve 
This is the locus of equilibrium points at different levels of income or budgets. It is as simple as that. Nothing else. Okay. This is the locus. Just you know, at different points, at different levels of income, different levels of budgets, you will be having different levels of satisfaction according to the ordinal utility analysis. Different levels of optim optimal satisfaction, or you can say maximum satisfaction. And when you just join these points, you get income consumption curve. But now the shape of this thing depends on the goods we are talking about x and y. Okay, now let's discuss that that thing. Different goods behave differently due to change in income. When your real income changes, different goods will behave differently. Okay, there will be some goods when your income increases, you will be wanting more of them, and there will be some goods when your income increases, you will be wanting less of them. All right, let's see this graph first. These forward moving budget lines show that your budget is increasing. And what is happening now? When your budget is increasing, you are wanting more and more of good Y and your quantity demanded for X increases a little and then it starts reducing. Okay, it remains the same and if, I, if we might go further also, it might start reducing. Okay. So what is X here? X is an inferior good in this graph and Y here is a luxury good or a normal good. Okay. Now moving on to this uh, next graph. If we move, if we consider Y as an inferior good and X as a luxury or normal good, the income consumption curve will be like this. Earlier it was like this and now it is like this. Okay. So what are inferior goods and normal goods? Uh, it, their examples. Let's say your income is increasing. Earlier you had a small job and now your job you are promoted to in the, your department and your income has increased. Earlier you used to eat chapati and dal only. You didn't have much budget to go outside and eat different kind of kinds of things. You used to eat the cheapest vegetable available in the market. Let's say that is cauliflower. And now when your income has increased, you have skipped one time meal of chapati then you started eating pasta, sandwich and you are now eating broccoli. So these things, what you are eating after your increase in income, these are luxury goods and normal goods. Uh, luxury goods or you can say normal goods. And these things which you were eating more when your budget was less, when your income was less, these things are called as inferior goods. See, now we should understand these two important points also for normal or luxury goods as the income or budget increases their quantity demanded increases so there is a positive relationship so income effect for normal or luxury goods is positive and when the income increases the quantity demanded of inferior goods reduce the income effect is negative for them this is a very common question being asked in different types of examinations Okay, so we have, we have now studied income effect. Now we'll be coming on to a law that was related to income effect. Okay, Angel's law of family expenditure. This this guy was Ernest Angel, which gave uh, you know relationship between your income and on what thing you're going to spend. Okay, so it simply says the poorer the family, the greater is the proportion of income spent on necessities, which is simple. अगर कोई गरीब परिवार है, it will spend most of its income on the necessities, you know, the necessities of life, and let's say inferior goods, you can say it will spend on buying wheat flour, it will spend on buying vegetables, or it will spend on buying, let's say, rape seed oil and mustard oil. These are necessities of life. They need to fulfill these necessities to survive. And as the income of a family increases, the proportion of income spent on necessities reduces. Earlier they might be spending 60% of their income on necessities. Now they are just spending 10% on necessities. And the proportion of income that they are spending on luxuries will increase. Okay, this is as simple as that. As you can see, your as we see this case, we have two goods X and Y. And our income has increased from 300 to 4, 500 and 600. Okay, when our income increases, so this is the price consumption curve as we have seen in the price effect graph. This is good X. Now, now what we are going to do is, do is we are going to put 
income of 300 400 500 and 600 against the quantity demanded of x okay so it will give rise to different shapes okay this graph will be of different shapes depending on the type what is x what kind of a good it is okay uh, let's say quantity of x is on x axis and change in income we have considered here is the income is changing by a stagnant or constant amount of rupees 100 now we are going to observe the changes in quantity of x and these changes in quantity of x will tell us when your income increases steadily by a constant amount how much you are changing the quantity demanded of that good this will tell what kind of a good it is okay let's see the first graph delta m that is change in income is constant okay and change in quantity demanded of x is first the change is high then it is reducing the change is too much then the change is lesser the change is lesser as you can see in this graph okay and what shape does it give it gives a shape of rising upwards this is the shape it gives to the curve so what kind of a good it is it is a normal good with equal increments in income the quantity demanded of normal good increases at a decreasing rate and when the quantity demanded of a good increases at an increasing rate see the changes in quantity demanded are increasing let's see if it if you put it at 700 the change might be more delta q that is the numerator is increasing and denominator uh, denominator is increasing and numerator is constant okay so with equal increments in income the change in quantity demanded of luxuries increases at an increasing rate okay the quantity purchase that is delta q increases at an increasing rate and for inferior goods what happens is as your income increases the quantity demanded actually reduces so the shape becomes like this earlier the shape in case of luxuries was like this and in case of inferior goods the shape is backward okay moving backwards towards the y-axis so the quantity purchased of inferior goods decreases at an increasing rate when your income increases steadily all the, this thing proves is when, a, when you get rich okay you will be buying less of inferior goods and more and more of normal goods and luxury goods which the law says alright now let's move on uh, so there is some line written here this is very important uh, now we need to see the change in quantity demanded of a good due to substitution effect we have seen price effect we have taken out income effect of it and we need to break the price effect into substitution effect and income effect by using either of these three methods okay to see how substitution effect is different from income effect and how it is a part of price effect all right first method of seeing how the substitution effect affects the quantity demanded of a good when its price changes in relation to the other commodities or its substitute there are three methods compensating variation in income equivalent variation in income and cost difference okay we'll be discussing them one by one and we'll be putting them against each other so that you can understand the difference also it is very easy to understand just keep focus all you need to do here is pay your attention nothing else it's very income if you get very easy if you just try to focus here right now for five minutes and otherwise it's a very confusing thing okay what is compensating variation in income let's straight away jump here just move this uh, just forget the definition in the beginning our equilibrium was at point a okay pl1 is the budget line before the price reduction of x this is simple and our equilibrium was at a point okay at this point this is the indifference curve ic1 and on this IC1 we were at point A because equilibrium or maximum satisfaction is given by tangency of budget line and indifference curve. So initially before the price reduction of X we were at point A and we were at maximum level of satisfaction. 
but then what happened the price of x with the price of x reduced what will happen this leg will move this side pl1 will become pl2 all right now what happened the equilibrium moved at b we have climbed due to the reduction of price of x what happened is our real income increase and it became cheaper in comparison to other goods so we were able to buy more of it earlier well let's say we were buy, buying o and 1 now we are buying o and 2 of x okay because because it has become cheaper and our equilibrium has jumped to b which is a higher indifference curve also okay so this is the complete o n 2 minus o n 1 this is the complete price effect okay the change in quantity demanded of x due to change in price now how are we going to fragment this price effect into substitution effect and income effect? the first method is compensating variation in income what we do is here is uh, as we know whenever something gets cheaper your real income increases so what we do here in CVI is we take away some money so that whenever we take away some money the budget line will shift backwards and parallelly it will shift parallel okay it shifts from PL2 to let's say P3 L3 it will shift backwards and when it shifts backward we have to take only that much amount of we uh, the we have to take only that much amount of income back from them so that the customer moves on to the earlier level of earlier satisfaction curve when we keep on moving this thing gradually here and here it will come to the tangency point on ic1 at point c okay when we take away some income we see that from b it has moved to c so now what here uh, what is this here is this gap is called as income effect and this gap is called as substitution effect now let's see the definition compensating variation in income this is the variation in income which will take the consumer to the same level of satisfaction that is ic1 where he was before the price change of x he will it will be uh, cvi will take you have to take away some money and it will take the consumer to the earlier level of satisfaction where he was before the change in price of x okay let me just remove it from here and we'll understand it again so that it is very clear to you okay first he was here okay after the change in price of x he was here what happened was we took away some income from him so that he comes to the early level of satisfaction when we take away some income the budget line shifts backwards and it is tangent to the earlier indifference curve at point c so now this difference is called as income effect and this difference is called as substitution effect this difference means this much total was o n uh, o n1 minus o o n2 minus o n1 was price effect o n2 minus o n1 this much was price effect and out of this let's say o n3 n3 n2 is income effect and n1 n3 is substitution effect what you need to remember here is when the price reduces your real income increases and as per CVI when your real income has increased you have to take away some money so that you are able to take him back to the earlier level of satisfaction. So this is all about compensating variation in income. Now let's move on to the next one. Here we are going to give him some money equivalent variation in income this method is called as just wait a second equivalent variation in income just focus on the graph okay first we were here on this uh, before the price change, change in price of x we were here when the price of x reduced what happened was we moved on we moved to the point b o n1 n3 so o n3 minus o n1 is equal to the price effect and how do we differentiate now what we do is 
we will give him some money so that he when we give him some money the budget line p l1 will move towards the right we will give him that much of money so that he reaches the same level of satisfaction where he would have reached due to change in price of x that means we are going to give him money which takes him to the i c2 and this is the tangency point here when he give when we give him some money so let's say out of this when we are going to give him some money due to v giving him money he moves from o n1 to o n2 so n1 n2 is income effect n1 n2 theek hai and this is n1 n3 what is the other part that is the substitution effect that is n2 n3 is the substitution effect what happens is let's do it again so that it is understood to you in this thing equivalent variation in income we are going to give him money equal to there is a reason behind these names okay just wait a second equivalent variation in income is the variation in income which we take the consumer to the same level of satisfaction that is ic2 in this case where he would have reached due to change in price of x here we are talking about reduction in price of x and due to reduction in price of x the quantity of x has increased and his level of satisfaction has also increased so we are going to give him some money that will take him to the that level of satisfaction that is ic2 when he give when we give him money he moves from a to in this budget line moves from pl1 to let's say p3 l3 okay it moves parallelly to pl1 and it will become tangent to ic2 at c and this much is called as income effect and this much is called as substitution effect due to us giving him money his real income increased he is buying n1 n2 more of x and because the price of x has reduced he will buy n2 n3 more of x because it has become relatively cheaper than other goods this is income effect here and this is substitution effect here keep listening with patience and with attention you will get it okay now the third part third part is most commonly used because it has a formula okay it you know, the cost difference here is change in price what was the price earlier and what is the price now and the quantity that you bought bought initially okay let's move to the diagram straight away earlier the budget line was pl1 and we were at point a when the price of x reduced the budget line became pl2 earlier we were at a now we went to b okay now n1 n3 is the change in quantity demanded due to change in price that is price effect and now what we will do is in cost difference we will be taking away some money when we will be taking away some money this pl2 will move parallelly backwards until it crosses the point a not touches ic1 it crosses the point a this is the difference here between compensating variation and income and cost difference method here we will reduce the income by only that amount so that it crosses point a we have to reduce income here so that it touches the earlier indifference curve okay it becomes tangent to the indifference curve now let's see the definition it is a variation in income which will allow the consumer to buy the same combination that's why we are crossing here okay earlier he was buying this much of combination this combination now we'll be reducing the income by that much amount which will allow the consumer to buy same exact same combination that means that means we have to take him back to a only same combination of goods which he was buying earlier before the price change of x okay we are taking some money here that's why the budget line is moving backwards it will move backward until it crosses point a okay and uh, let's see it again earlier we were here price reduced we reached at point b 
at a higher interference curve then we took away some money it is crossing a again but what will happen is the consumer is not going to buy again only this much the same combination he will not buy again o n1 which he was buying before the price change he will buy o n2 even after you are going to reduce that income and the budget line will move backwards from p l2 to let's say p3 l3 he will not buy o n1 of x he will buy o n2 because it has become cheaper in comparison to other goods that means n1 n2 is substitution effect and this this much n2 n3 n2 n3 is income effect all right so this is the difference between all these three methods and these are very easy to understand in compensating variation in income we are going to take away some money from him we are going just remember we are going to take him to the earlier level of satisfaction in equivalent variation in income we will be giving him some money to take him to the level of satisfaction where he would have reached due to change in price of x okay earlier level we are going to take him to the future here we are going to take him to the past here and we are going to take him to the past here but the point is we are going to allow him to buy the same combination take him to the earlier level of satisfaction take him to the future level of satisfaction where he would have been due to change in price of x okay so this is all about what was price effect price effect is necessarily income effect plus substitution effect and it is nothing else okay substitution effect was studied by three methods cvi evi and cost difference we are going to take him to the earlier level of satisfaction here earlier satisfaction here future satisfaction here and earlier earlier combination of goods that he was buying okay so these are the three methods and this is all about price effect income effect and substitution effect thank you very much everyone i hope you understand this thing and uh, we'll be continuing in this manner only thank you have a nice day